I often get people saying that Bronze Era physiques are not impressive at all because they were all tiny and they just looked good because they were very lean. Well, I only have two words to say to these people. George Hackenschmidt, a Bronze Era lifter who was absolutely massive. Sure, he wasn't shredded, but come on, just look at the guy. He weighed around 100 kilos or 220 pounds at 175 centimeters or 5 foot 9. His name has reached legendary status in strength sports, wrestling, and bodybuilding. I will be making a full video on Hackenschmidt's life and achievements, so make sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see that. But in this video, we're going to explore the exercises which got Hackenschmidt so jacked. We're going to be taking a look at a book written by the man himself called The Way to Live. This book was originally written all the way back in 1908 and quickly turned into the best-selling physical training book of all time. It was so successful in fact that it was published in 21 different editions and even to this day you can hop on Amazon and grab yourself a copy. The book goes into all aspects of life that Hackenschmidt considers important for health, strength, and fitness. But in this video, we're going to focus specifically on the part about training and exercising with weights. What's up guys, this is Natty Life from the future here. I was editing this video together and I thought just putting the drawings from the book on the screen would be very boring. So I thought I would demonstrate each of the exercises myself. Now, I've never done many of these, so excuse me if I'm not doing them perfectly. I tried my best. Obviously, it's just for demonstration and entertainment purposes. And wow, I kind of underestimated this workout. I don't know why, but even just demonstrating these with an empty bar, man, I'm out of breath. I'm sweaty as hell, and let me tell you, if I would adjust the weights to my level of experience, wow. Wow. This would be an incredible full body workout, actually, and that's just doing one set of each exercise. So, let's get into it. Hackenschmidt starts by showing us 14 simple exercises which can be performed with no equipment whatsoever. While he says that training with weights is certainly the best way to fully strengthen and develop one's muscles, these bodyweight exercises can be a great starting point for anyone new to training. I'm not going to go through each of these as I'm much more interested in the weighted exercises, but I will show them on screen now, so feel free to pause and read for yourself if you're interested in the bodyweight exercises. Now moving on to the weighted exercises. The first exercises are specifically for the neck. Hackenschmidt tells us to start by performing neck curls and extensions using our hands as resistance. Then we are rolling the head in every direction, bending the neck as much as possible. We start each of these at 5 reps and slowly work our way to 20 reps. The next exercise is this wrestler's bridge, which we saw in the Indian book. It's performed exactly the same here. The body should be resting on only the heels and the crown of the head. We start with a 30 to 50 pound barbell and we press it in this position. We do 3 reps at first, gradually adding reps until we make it to 10. Then we increase the weight by 10 pounds and start back again at 3 reps. This is actually an exercise that I've been quite interested in since normal neck flexion exercises tend to give me nausea. So I might be giving this one a try personally to see if it can grow my neck. For the final neck exercise, we get down on our hands and knees and we hang a weight on the back of our heads using a belt. Starting with just 10 pounds at first, we move our heads up, down, and side to side until tired but not exhausted. With Hackenschmidt being a wrestler, I'm not surprised he put so much emphasis on neck training. The dude had an absolutely meaty neck. It's interesting though that this sort of training is largely ignored by gym bros nowadays, me included honestly. 
but I will say that this is really getting me motivated to start seriously training my neck. All right, so working our way down the body, the next series of exercises will train the neck, shoulders, arms, and chest muscles. Hackenschmidt notes that most physical culture systems at the time neglected shoulder development, and he was sad to see many otherwise well-developed athletes with narrow and unshapely shoulders. He wants us to give special attention to the shoulder exercises in this section. Also, it looks like Hackenschmidt is including the traps when he says shoulders, because you'll see the first exercise is a pretty standard shrug. So we start with a 10 pound dumbbell in each hand and we shrug our shoulders as high as possible for 10 reps, gradually increasing up to 20 reps at which point we bump up the weight by 5 pounds and start again. This next one is quite interesting. We hold the arms bent at 90 degrees like the middle of a hammer curl rep and then roll the shoulders all the way around using the same reps and weights as the previous exercise. I've never seen anyone do this exercise before. I suppose you'll have the biceps and forearms involved with holding the dumbbell in position and then the traps and shoulders will be moving the weight. Then we have another exercise we don't see people doing anymore. We start standing up straight with dumbbells in each hand and then alternating each hand we bring the dumbbells to our armpits. Starting with 5 pound dumbbells, we do 5 reps, gradually working our way up to 10 reps. Then we move up in weight and start again. This looks like it would work the biceps, shoulders, and traps. The next exercise is pretty close to a shoulder press, except we bring the barbell lower, to around chest height. We start with a 30 to 50 pound barbell, do 5 reps, and gradually work our way up to 10. Then we add 10 pounds and start again. We also perform this exercise with both supinated and pronated grips, which again is interesting since you really don't see people overhead pressing with a supinated grip nowadays. Then this exercise looks to be a pretty standard barbell reverse curl. Starting with 10 to 15 pounds, we work our way up from 5 to 10 reps and increase in 5 pound increments. We should also switch up the grip and turn it into a standard curl, in which case he recommends starting at 20 to 25 pounds. The next one is more of a standard shoulder press, with the bar starting above the shoulders and going straight up. We are also meant to perform this exercise with both supinated and pronated grips, starting from 30 to 50 pounds and working our way up from 5 to 10 reps and moving up in weight in 5 pound increments. Next we have a single arm jerk. The description says barbell, but in the drawing the guy is using a dumbbell. I would think a dumbbell would be more comfortable for this exercise. But anyway, we are meant to hold it at shoulder height with our elbow resting against our hip. Then with a quick bend at the knee, we throw the weight upwards and straighten out our arms. He says it requires some practice, but it is great at preserving nimbleness and equilibrium. This will develop the legs, forearms, and triceps. We start with 25 to 40 pound weights, doing 5 reps on each side, working our way up to 10 reps before adding 5 pounds and starting again. The next exercise is a pretty standard push-up. Starting at 5 reps, we work our way up to sets of 20. Then we have a floor press. Starting with 30 to 50 pounds, we work our way up from 5 to 10 reps and then move up in 10 pound increments. The drawing seems to have a pretty close grip, so doing it this way will also work our triceps quite a bit, as well as our chest. For the next exercise, we stand up and swing a barbell with straight arms from our thighs to directly overhead. We start with 15 to 30 pounds and work our way up from 5 to 10 reps and move up in 5 pound increments. Then we have what looks to be similar to a pullover except on the floor. We start with a barbell straight overhead and bring it out in front of our chest with straight arms. Starting at 10 to 20 pounds we move up from 5 to 10 reps and add 5 pounds. 
For the final exercise in this section, we have dumbbell flies on the floor. Starting with 10 pound dumbbells, we work our way up from 5 to 10 reps and move up by 1 pound. I think it's clear that several of these exercises could be improved with the use of a bench, but unfortunately it really wasn't used at the time. Anyway, that's it for this section. Now we move on to the third series of exercises, which is meant for developing the abdominal, back, and hip muscles. For the first exercise, it looks like we're doing a clean, starting with stiff legs off the floor and ending with the barbell at the chest. Here we use 30 pounds and work our way up from 5 to 10 reps, then add 5 pounds. The second exercise is very similar, except we are using 20 pound dumbbells instead of a barbell. This next one I've also never seen before. We hold a 10 to 20 pound bar overhead and bend at the hips with straight legs. I guess this would be somewhat similar to a good morning, but it must be quite difficult to hold the weight out like that as you go down. As you may have guessed, we're also doing 5 to 10 reps and adding 5 pound increments. Now this one looks very much like a stiff leg deadlift, starting with 50 to 70 pounds and 5 reps, gradually adding 1 rep per week until we reach 10 reps, then adding 10 pounds and starting over. Then we have a pretty standard leg raise exercise. We can do this weighted by adding 5 pounds to each foot and we work our way up from 5 to 10 reps. And finally, we have a pretty standard sit-up, which we can also do weighted by holding two dumbbells. This one is also meant to be done between 5 to 10 reps with slow progression in weight. Then we're offered an excellent forearm rolling exercise. We can make a hole in a broom handle and suspend a small weight from a cord. Then we stand on two chairs and roll the handle to move the weight up and down. We are also offered this fancier version meant for gyms where the handle is held up by a special stand. This is definitely a very legit forearm exercise which I personally do every week and you can find a very similar machine in many gyms to this day. Then finally we move on to the leg training section. And the first exercise is the legendary hack squat, named after Mr. Hackenschmidt himself, of course. Nowadays we have machines to recreate this movement, but this right here is where it all got started, guys. George Hackenschmidt holding a barbell behind his back and squatting deep on his toes which allowed him to take his quads through a huge range of motion. I'll read you the full description for this one. He says, Hold a barbell of 10 to 20 pound weight behind the back with arms crossed. Heels together, toes pointed outwards. Now make a deep knee bend, riding on your toes, parting your knees until almost squatting on your heels. Rise again to first position, repeat 5 times, adding 1 repetition per week up to 20 repetitions. After which, increase weight by 5 pounds and start afresh. Now that's some real ass to grass stuff, eh? This exercise is mainly what built Hackenschmidt's impressive legs. For the next two exercises, we don't have any drawings, but he's basically telling us to practice all sorts of jumping styles, with and without weights, and also to do long runs while skipping on the toes of one foot, which is a pretty funny mental image. I would pay good money to see old 100 kilo George skipping around the room on one leg. The next exercise is a pretty standard back squat, except we do them with the heels together. We start with 20 to 40 pounds and 3 reps, working our way up to 10 reps after which we add 5 pounds. The final exercise is a leg press, which I definitely didn't expect to see here. I had no idea people were leg pressing with barbells before leg press machines. Here we start with 20 to 30 pounds and 3 to 10 reps, then we add 5 pounds. And that's it, those are all the exercises recommended by George Hackenschmidt to fully develop a physique. Man, I hope I don't kill myself trying this. Oh, Hackenschmidt, give me strength.
After this, there's a chapter dedicated to advanced exercises for experienced athletes who want to take their strength to the next level. But that's a topic for another video. Anyway, what's our takeaway here? Well, clearly Hackenschmidt is putting a major emphasis on progressive overload. We saw that he gave a clear path for progression on each exercise, both in weight and reps. Let me read you a bit from the following chapter which perfectly explains this. Some trainers recommend to their pupils for the training of all muscle groups one and the same light weight and believe they are able to obtain the same effect by frequent repetitions. My experience has taught me that this is wrong. For the muscles of men and animals who are distinguished for certain feats of endurance are by no means overdeveloped. A long distance runner or long distance cyclist always have comparatively thin legs, as have a racehorse, stag, and greyhound. Nature does not act without aim and purpose. Hence, there is a great difference between feats of endurance and feats of strength. A further illustration of the fallacy of attempting to develop the muscles by frequent repetition with the same light exercises may be found in the comparison with any and every other form of athletics in which a man would never think of merely repeating his training program. In order to improve himself either in pace or distance, he must set himself a steady progression of arduous effort. Man, reading this seriously put a smile on my face, guys. I love how well understood these basic principles were over 115 years ago. Hackenschmidt is telling us not to mess around with lightweight fluff workouts. If one wants to build big muscles, they must use weights which are sufficiently heavy enough to challenge them, using moderate rep ranges and most importantly implementing steady progression in order to keep improving. This is certainly excellent advice and always will be. But what do we think of Hackenschmidt's program and selection of exercises in general? Well, look, if you've never trained before and you start doing this program, you will definitely get results. I mean, just look at Hackenschmidt. He was 175 centimeters tall and 100 kilos, okay? The dude was built like a house. But the reality is that we do have significantly more efficient programs and equipment nowadays. There are quite a few of these exercises which can be performed much more effectively using modern equipment and machines. Personally, I just enjoy exploring old school methods as I find them motivating and inspiring. I don't expect to find any revolutionary information, but sometimes there are little nuggets of wisdom that stick with me. So the point is, take from this video what you will. Whether it's motivation, inspiration, appreciation, education, or just entertainment. If you enjoyed it, make sure to check out some of the other similar videos in my old school bodybuilding playlist. And please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to support what I do here. Thank you for watching.